All right, good evening, the Minding Your Business Podcast. I'm your host, Champ Ron. Today is Thursday, November the 6th. I am live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, but we're recording not necessarily a, a uh, uh, episode within the podcast. This is a special tribute, uh, and I'm going to get into that here in a second. Uh, as you know, the Minding Your Business podcast is brought to you and powered by the Binge Podcast Network. The Binge. Uh, we have a nice network. Shout out to my guy, Dominic Lawson. We just started. We've already got a lineup of great podcasts, including uh, not only the Minding Your Business podcast, but the Startup Life by Dominic Lawson with Owls LLC, the Don't Touch Nothing podcast with Shara and Sherelle. Um, the Racially Motivated Podcast, uh, Let's Be Real, and uh, Quotally. And so those are some podcasts, and I know Dominic's working very hard. I'm working along with him. We're looking to add more podcasts or some new, some existing. Uh, so if you're interested in being part of the podcast network, don't make it about me. Don't make it about Dominic. Make it about yourself. So don't worry about all of that. Let, let's work together and let's help you build your audience. And that's exactly what we're doing. And we've got uh, some great things planned for 2019. Uh, some things you're not going to find out about until you, you know, till your friend tell you and it's going to be too late. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you want to be a part of it, inbox me, inbox, inbox Dominic Lawson. If you're interested, if you've got an idea about a podcast, if you're interested in starting a podcast, you know, none of us is not about being an expert or or anything like that. It's really just about. Um, let's work together so that we can build an audience and reach the goals that you're looking to reach. Uh, so it's not about me. It's not about Dominic. It's about you and your podcast and how you want to reach, again, the targeted audience and then beyond. Uh, and we're looking to build that with the network. So thank you so much. Brooks Brothers Consulting is a sponsor of the podcast. That's uh, accompanied by me and uh, my brother, Philip, who are sales and business development uh, company firm. And uh, matter of fact, part of what I'm doing up here in Pennsylvania has to do with Brooks Brothers Consulting, where I'm working with financial institutions. And uh, I'm going to get into that real quick here in a second with what I'm doing here in Pennsylvania. But right now I'm sitting in the hotel. I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's cold as hell up here. I know it's cold as hell back in Memphis, but damn, it's cold as hell up here. <laughs> In, uh, in Philadelphia, but it's all good. I've been to Philadelphia before, and uh, I was in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania earlier, and I'll get into that again in a second. But if you're interested in having uh, Philip and I work with your company, it's mostly primary myself, um, even with small businesses. You, you need to, when you're going to 2019, you need to look at how you're developing business, and you need to look at how you're converting and retaining customers, like we talked about on the last podcast episode. That's very critical to you converting your business or converting your, your hobby into your business. How are you able to do transactions with customers and then how are you able to retain them and then have them be advocates for your business? That's what that, that's what transforms it into a business. So uh, let us work with you. 901-808-3801 and www.brooksbrothersconsulting.com. When I spoke of the Binge Podcast Network earlier, I didn't give you the website. So that's www.onabinge.com. That's www.onabinge.com. So no episode with this today. It's just a special tribute. So let's get into it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Thank you all so much, Champ Ron, the Minding Your Business podcast, Thursday, December the 6th of 2018. There's a whole lot going on, so I want to get into this very special episode. Uh, I've got my Facebook Live audience. I've got my audience on Spreaker right over here. Um, and so everybody is in live. Uh, what's up, Daryl? What's going on? Jatan, what's up, girl? How you doing? Mob, what up, boy? Ron Lewis, what's up? Sonsia, what's going on, girl? How you doing? Said Jackson, what's up? Reginald. Kaylin, how you doing, girl? What's up? Say what's up to the peoples. Andrea Muff, what's up, girl? How you doing? Angel Johnson, what's up? And Jeffrey Williams, what's going on? So um, the point of today, and I was talking in the opening about why I'm here in Pennsylvania, 
looking to come back tomorrow. But I spent this week, uh, I've taken the whole state of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm up here. I came into Pittsburgh on Monday. And the whole point is working with community-based banks and make sure they keep the community in community banking, which means that as they're doing loans and deposits and uh, all the different investments and things that they do uh, throughout their business model, that they don't forget about working in low and moderate income communities, not to appease them, not to just get credit on exams and things like that, but even more so that they are compelled and have a heart for helping raise those communities up so that they mirror other communities that they do business in as well. So that every community, every assessment area that they've got, they're doing business in and they're offering those uh, people the same opportunities, whether it's through loans, through deposits, things like that, that there's um, equitable treatment and that they're investing the same way. Right. So it's just like in Memphis, they, you know, we hold them accountable to invest the same way in Germantown, like they would in South Memphis or Orange Mound, the same way they would off, uh, you know, White Station and Poplar. All right. So we're doing the same thing up here. So I've had great meetings with some great folks here throughout Pennsylvania, some very community minded banks and and people that are really genuine and um, presenting some ideas and some uh, ways that they can continue to evolve and push the envelope. So that's what I'm doing here in Pennsylvania. It's been cold as hell, ran into some snow in uh, Pittsburgh, but it's really all good. And uh, I've been excited, been able to get engulfed in some of the culture here and uh, some of the great restaurants and and whatnot. So anyway, that's where I'm at. So I'm away from uh, Memphis on today. But it's all good. I've really enjoyed that. Even got a chance to spend a little time in Trenton, New Jersey uh, on today meeting with the bank. So I even went not only just through Pennsylvania, but even outside of Pennsylvania um, to uh, get into some of that with, um, you know, some of the the banks and their CRA credit and again, what they're doing in the community. So cuz, oh, what's up, Billy? What's up, man? What's going on? Billy coming in from El Paso, Texas. What's up, baby? Tim Holcomb, what's up? Miss McDonald, what's going on? So I always shout out to the people. And I got everybody. What's up, y'all, on Spreaker, listening to the Minding Your Business podcast. So listen, let let me start out uh, like this, because um, really the purpose of me getting on today, and I've I've got an episode that I'm going to do tomorrow with um, Senator Katrina Robinson is going to be my guest on tomorrow uh, for episode, uh, the standard episode for the Minding Your Business podcast that's normally on Friday. But today I wanted to just address a a tribute that I want to make. On last year, early on in my podcast run, um, a close mentor and really good friend of mine, uh, Bernell Smith II, Bernell E. Smith II, uh, passed away October of 2017. And I had known Burnell from being a child, and I actually knew his dad prior to that. And these are things that I've already talked about, so it's it's not a big thing. There's, you know, but early on in the podcast, I had to do a tribute for Burnell. And then um, October of this year, a uh, good friend and, and business colleague, Jason Daniels uh, of Titan Electrical, passed away uh, and transitioned in October. So uh, unfortunately, I've had to do a few of these tributes for for people that have been close to me. It is not a doesn't mean that anybody else that has transitions any less than or or anything like that. I've just I've done these for people that I've had a close uh, walk with and and have impacted my life and in the lives that are around my close faction. So that that doesn't mean that no one else deserves a tribute or we don't get um, concerned when other folks transition, no matter what their status was or their popularity or how many likes they had on Facebook or how many shares they get or, or any of that. None of that factors into any of that. Um, but today it, it, it has saddened me on, on last night. I received a phone call, um, from a good friend and colleague that, uh, chef Gary Williams, um, passed away. He is the owner of, um, Cray, uh, Deja Vu. 
and uh, he, you know he had had some issues and and things like that there there's no doubt about it um but it, it wasn't at least from my standpoint wasn't really something that was expected um actually prior to coming here to Pennsylvania I'd been by the restaurant and if you for those that know Gary if you listen to the podcast you're not really familiar with Memphis or you haven't really patronized Memphis much you you probably won't be familiar with Gary Gary's from the New Orleans area. He brought that New Orleans style, that New Orleans flavor uh, to Memphis uh, that many of us here in Memphis enjoy. And many of us that love New Orleans as a city of destination, um, Gary brought that kind of flavor, that kind of vibe, that kind of spirit uh, to the city of Memphis. Um, And that's within his profession. What he brought even more so than that was just a a really kind-hearted brother, man, that... um, you know, anytime you saw him, he always had a good word for you. Now, he could check with the best of them now. So a lot of y'all don't know Gary. Gary could get his his, his checks in. And, uh, you know, he and I would uh, sometimes spar a little bit on that, um, particularly when I come by the restaurant and, and things like that. But no matter, you know, what he was going through, and there'd be times where he'd really be going through some things, man. Um, Gary always had a good word for you, man, and really cared about like we talked about a a couple episodes ago on the podcast about customer service and customer retention. And he was someone that always looked at uh, the very best in people and just had a, he's just a brother with a good spirit, man. And, you know, to you, when you get that news of someone when they're close to you like that, it it, it does something to you. A little, a little piece of you kind of goes away. And even though I was here out of town and, and I got that phone call, and that's not a phone call that you look to, to ever receive um, on anybody. And it, it, it's been very tough. It's been a tough day uh, with, with him on our, our mind and hearts, man. So Chef Gary Williams is definitely going to be missed. It's a huge impact to the community. There's been a lot of heartfelt um, you know, tributes and kind words. Um, all over you know, my Facebook timeline, amongst uh, Facebook friends and colleagues, real friends and colleagues, and and even beyond that. So uh, it, it's very tough. It, it, it definitely is a loss. Um, I shout out everybody who um, was involved in Gary's life, um, those friends, and, and then certainly to the family, the condolences there, but you know, to the friends and you know, business partners and, you know, everybody that had a chance to, you know, be impacted by Gary's presence, man. Um, you know, shout out to to all of you. And I hope that you find um, peace uh, amongst, you know, this trying time. And, um, you know, as you know, a lot of times years go on and all of us get a little older, a little bit wiser and have a little bit better vision on things and um, sometimes have a little bit different perspective on things than when we were younger. And what I hope comes from, you know, not just from people who who die and transition this life, but hopefully every day all of us can keep in mind that, you know, I'm here in a hotel, so I'll use this as my analogy. Uh, life is essentially a hotel, essentially what it is. You come into the hotel, you check in, Right. You get introduced to everything uh, that comes in. And then uh, it, it, when you first stay in the hotel, you know, they start giving you stuff, right? Because they want you to enjoy your stay. So you're always being given things, right? And then you stay long enough in the hotel, <laughs> depending on how long you stay, they start taking things away. And that's how life is. Life, life gives and then, you know, you stay in life long enough and you're fortunate and you're blessed to stay in life long enough and um, continue to to move forward. And then life starts taking things away from you. And, and Gary certain wasn't to that point, but just flow with me on this analogy. And so at some point you check out of the hotel, right? And, and life's that same way. We check in and we check out. The, the beauty of it is, is what do you do while you stay? So during your stay in the hotel, what did you do? What who did you impact? What what positivity did you bring to the world? What value did your life bring to the world and other people and the environment and things like that? So, you know, that's that's the analogy I always use for uh, life. 
um, even when I talk to people or even when I think about it myself. It's it's just like a, a hotel stay. And it, and most hotel stays are short, right? Um, and, and such is life. And so, you know, why you're st- why we're all here, you know, every time someone transitions, it shouldn't have to remind us of our mortality. Um, sometimes we forget about that and it's just natural as, as human beings, man. But, you know, you get to a point where you're always mindful of that. And every moment, you know, that you have with your people, man, cherish that. You know, cherish that shit. You know what I mean? Like, people go through all these petty beefs and these petty hang-ups. And, you know, some some people go through stuff. They be so mad, don't even know why they mad. They can't even remember what they were mad about to start with. Like, you know, get to a point where in your maturity and in your walk and during your hotel stay where you, you put aside a lot of the, you know, the, the petty hang-ups and the assumptions of this and, you know, the pessimism of that and whatnot and and just realize that at, at any point any of us can transition life you don't have to be old you don't have to be sick or sickly you know things can happen in an instant just like that you know what i mean young people old people it, it doesn't matter you know you could be healthy one day you can get all the gains in the world at the gym you can run all that you know you could fall out at any time I've been to plenty of funerals with folk that, uh, you know, every day they were in the gym. And some people that never touched the gym, you know, never walked within 100 feet of a gym. All of them end up in the same place. So, you know, I want to just say that because you know, a lot of times we we use these unfortunate situations where we have loved ones and friends transition. And we, we use that to have this temporary reminder of mortality and then. When, you know, some of that kind of goes away and we move on, you know, we have to wait for the next instance for it to remind us. And we need to always be mindful of that. And so I urge everybody, if you've got petty, whether it's business beast, whether it's personal, whether it's both, you've got to be able to come to some kind of grips with that. If you were wrong, say you were sorry. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you weak. That That's what those strong, you know, mature people do. If if you've wronged somebody, you know, because some people are always the victim, <laughs> you let them tell it. But if you've wronged somebody, which I certainly have, I've said the wrong things, I've done wrong, you know what I mean? Sometimes not intentional, sometimes intentional. You know what I mean? And most of us, if you're going to be willing to admit that, at least admit it to yourself. You may not admit it on Facebook, on comments and that type of thing or in post. But at least admit to yourself that you've done wrong and you haven't always said and done the right thing. And go back and, and make, you know, peace with people. Because once they transition, that's it. And one of the fortunate things with Gary is we always had a, a phenomenal relationship. Um, you know, he's always open to feedback. He's always open to giving feedback. Um, he was great with his family. And he's definitely going to be missed. So, um a special tribute today to Chef Gary Williams. Um, I know he's already up there. I, I'm sure that pot of gumbo is coming up uh, up there where he's at already. Uh, so I know, uh, you know the Mangels and all those folks, they uh, they waiting for the gumbo and, and that whole menu that he's got going probably already up there. If they ain't already ate by now, it's... 5.30 uh, Central Time and 6.30 here on the East Coast. They might have already ate up there, but Chef Gary Williams, man. Yeah, we miss you, bro. So let's, let's give a quick just uh, moment of silence for uh, Chef Gary Williams. Yeah, thank y'all so much uh, here listening to the podcast. For those of you that are on uh, Facebook Live, if you've got um, your know, comments, you know, you can share that. Memories of Gary, uh, share those in the comments. If you'd like to join on the podcast, um, you know, definitely feel free to uh, to do that. Miss Cox, what's going on? Shay, what's up, girl? How you doing, sis? So. Thank you all for that opportunity for a tribute to our brother, uh, Chef Gary Williams, man. 
just awesome and just terrible news to to hear and of his transition. But his legacy lives on. Um, his restaurant is nine thirty six Florida Street, I believe. Someone can confirm that. I go there, but I don't think of the address. I just drive there and get what I'm gonna get. But um, if you want to go check his restaurant out, if you happen to be here in Memphis uh, and you want to check Deja Vu out, um, go to 936 uh, Florida Street. It's in South Memphis, uh, zip code 38106. Go there, get you something to eat. Um, I promise you, you're going to enjoy it. Um, tell them that, uh, that Ron sent you. Tell them Champ Ron sent you. But uh, go there. For those that are in Memphis, um, if you, you're a regular there and you go by there, you know, continue to do so and support the business. If you haven't had a chance to go by there and experience the goodness over there at uh, uh, Chef Gary Williams Restaurant, uh, you're missing out and y'all need to really get out there, man. So go out there, 936 Florida Street, 38106 South Memphis. Go have you uh, a great meal. Get you a great snack. Get both. Get a, get a meal and a snack. Good. Do whatever you got to do, but go have you a good time and uh, show some love over there to the restaurant, okay? All right. So let's get into my rundown, Ron's rundown, um, because there's a few things I want to go through uh, that's in the news real quick, if y'all don't mind that. Um, so let's get into the rundown. All right, so what we got going on around here. So you got, um, I'm going to read this because one thing that's starting to happen is for consumers, credit starting to tighten up again, y'all. Right, so some of y'all that remember 2008, 2009, 2010 in this country where credit was basically kind of just shut off, couldn't nobody get no loan and nothing like that, that's uh, starting to change. So according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, uh, a growing number of people are being denied credit and having their accounts closed. The findings suggest credit issuing companies may be trying to limit their risk since more people have been paying their bills late. The bank notes that the increasing rate of delinquencies follows a period of lax standards for borrowers spanning 2013 to 2016. So I don't know if anybody is experiencing that, uh, but there's starting to be these inklings of companies starting to tighten up credit again hopefully they don't tighten it up too much um but again they're starting to tighten that up so that's according to the federal reserve bank of new york all right the government there's a government task force that's calling for the u.s post office the usps to push up shipping prices on certain packages which is going to impact e-commerce some so those of you that are in e-commerce uh maybe you're keeping your eyes on out on what those particular packages are. I'm not sure what that is, but there's a treasury led force, um, uh, that is working, I guess, with the post office, um, to sort commercial packages and mail separately and then charge market-based prices for, uh, mail. So they're looking to take, I guess, commercial packages and then regular mail that the post office is sending out and now separate it out so that then they can charge regular mail, um, some kind of market-based price, which um, it says that uh, such a move would wipe out affordability guarantees on deliveries from the likes of Amazon, which currently uses the post office for 45% of its package delivery. So something y'all really going to want to keep your eye out, uh, particularly after the holiday season, is to see what happens with that. So just to be on the lookout, that's just part of the rundown. All right, Uber and Lyft are in the news. Um with non-emergency medical transportation industry valued at $3 billion, uh, ride uh, sharing services are seeing a future in the healthcare industry. So Uber and Lyft are planning to shuttle people to and from doctor's appointments. They probably, I figure they're probably already doing that anyway. I mean, hell, you can get an Uber and Lyft wherever you go unless they're doing a special rate on it. But anyway, Uber recently made two additions to its uh, health team, and then Lyft hired its first VP of healthcare in November. So... Just last month, they hired a VP over at Lyft that's in, in their healthcare division. Uh, Lyft and the American Cancer Society already provide rides to appointments for cancer patients in major U.S. cities. So it looks like, you know, they're, they're Uber and Lyft are really getting heavy 
uh, in this game as far as with health care. And it's probably something where they're offering some kind of special rates or, or something like that, I would imagine. All right. U.S. Gymnastics. So the U.S. Gymnastics team, uh, they're filing for bankruptcy protection after hundreds of lawsuits were filed against the organization following a sexual abuse scandal. Former USA Gymnastics physician Nassar was sentenced to 40 to 175 years in prison after pleading guilty to seven counts of sexual misconduct. My goodness. During his trial, more than 150 women and girls testified that he had abused them. So a lot of y'all are um, you know, aware of what's going on with U.S. gymnastics, but anytime you have something like that, um, with that being true and the evidence that they had against uh, that physician, yes, he needed to he needed to go away for for a good long time with what he did to you know those girls and to those women, completely uncalled for, and had to be dealt with. Um, but now it's trickling down to U.S. gymnastics, and they're filing bankruptcy. Not really sure how that's going to continue to go, but we shall definitely see. Um, as the months and the uh, maybe even the years go by. All right. So uh, hiring. So U.S. hiring cools off in the second half of 2018. So hiring in the United States showed continuing signs of leveling off during the second half of 2018, according to LinkedIn's December workforce report that just came out. Uh, the industries with the biggest year over year hiring increases in November were wellness and fitness, which was uh, almost 9 percent higher. Software and IT services, which is about 8% higher, 7.8%, and corporate services, which was 7.3% higher uh, in the second half so far in 2018, with just a few weeks left. Um, demand for workers with business management and communication and leadership and development tools has increased since November 2017, with gaps in these and other skills growing most in San Francisco, LA, and New York. So, you you need to get to the major city if you've got some of these skills, y'all. Um, you know, they're looking for people with business management, oral communication, leadership development in those cities. The skills gap is widening on the coast as workers have flocked to Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, and Nashville, Tennessee. So the coast are, are starting to struggle a little bit um, and having to do some things and some incentivizing uh, to keep people with those certain skill sets uh, on the coast. So U.S. hiring. So we'll see what that looks like. You know, some of y'all, you know, that you know, y'all may experience different things and y'all can share that if you're on Facebook. But it, when you start to see a slowdown in hiring, that has a domino effect on a lot of things. So I don't care if you're a business owner like like a lot of us are. We're, we're um, either you're self-employed or you're an actual business owner or you're a freelance business owner, whatever it is that you are, you're a W-2 employee. Um, when hiring cools down, it has an impact uh, on a lot of different things, depending on to what level that happens. All right. So next after that, let me go through the Chandler reports real quick. Um, for those that are familiar with real estate, um, every month the Chandler report comes out and it gives a pulse report on um, things that are going on in real estate. And I, I get it uh, to my inbox uh, and as it relates to the city of Memphis and Shelby County. So let me go through this real quick um, for November. So the November real estate update for Memphis, Tennessee. So total home sales in Memphis and Shelby County fell 4% in November as the number of units sold and average prices were both down slightly from last year, from 2017. There were 1,470 sales recorded for the month that totaled $243 million, down 1% in units uh, from 1,484 home sales November of 2017 that totaled $254 million. So everything, you know, sales and, and number of units, uh, all that was down um, uh, pretty, at least a measurable amount. Uh, average home sale prices were down 3% from last year. Uh, so the average price uh, now, or at least through November, was $165,415. Uh, the median sales price fell for the third time this year to $125,000, down 8% from $136,000 in November of 2017. So prices are starting to stabilize is what they're saying. 
So investor purchases accounted for 45 percent of home sales in Memphis uh, in November and 50 percent of purchases by out of town buyers. So we're continuing to do um, and see some of these trends that we've been seeing uh, for some time. So commercial sales, commercial property sales were down 10 percent in October uh, with 85 recorded compared to 94 in October 2017. So nine less sales year over year. The average price for a commercial property was down 70 percent. Damn, 70 percent for the month to 690,000 from 2.3 million last year. Now, that's significant when the average price, what that tells you is that there may be either there's some credit crunch going on or only the big players are really doing stuff. Because when it goes from 2.3 one year to 690,000 the next year, that's a big jump. That's a big jump down. So something to keep your your eye on. Automotive property sales were up 20 percent from last October with six recorded for the month. Averaging two hundred sixty three thousand two fifty compared to five last year at two oh eight eight hundred. So those uh vacant automotive uh places people are starting to buy up, which those are a little bit lower of a cost, and that's dragging the, the average price for a commercial property obviously down. Um so anyway, that's the you know, kind of the, the sales piece of it. Foreclosure activity, real quick. This is from the Chandler report, y'all. Um, Foreclosure activity was down 40% in November with 73 recorded for the month compared to 122 recorded in November of 2017. So great job, Memphis, there. There was significant reduction in foreclosure activity. Of the properties foreclosed, the average foreclosure amount was 82,321. The average tax appraised value for those properties was 112,194. Westwood, so Zip code 38109 in Westwood had the most homes in foreclosure inventory at the end of November with 136 valued at 5.4 million. Uh, Southeast uh, Shelby County, which is kind of the South Wind area, uh, zip code 38125 had the highest foreclosure inventory value of 15 million across 91 properties. Of course, uh, Fannie Mae had the, the most homes of that inventory with 122 valued at 11 million. So the most inventory was over at Westwood and then the, the highest foreclosure in terms of value was over in uh, the South Wing, kind of that uh, Hacks Cross and Shelby Drive uh, type area, 38125. So that's the Chandler report real quick, y'all. Um then you also had the stock market. So the stock market today uh, ended up being flat, but the last two days was a monster. They were, con- there were investor concerns about the United States and China with trade tariffs and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details in that with this particular podcast because it's going to become dated information. New stuff will come out. But um, so the, the Dow finished pretty flat. Um, NASDAQ was flat and the S&P 500 was flat today when it closed. But it rallied because earlier today, um, what I remember looking at, it was down as much as 550 points on the Dow. So that just tells you that, you know, there was some confidence that came in, I guess, at the end of the day or or whatever happened. So Brian Harris, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Deshaun Banks, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? Just my folks on, on Facebook Live. Deverick Watson, what's up, bro? How you doing? Nikki Brown, what's up, girl? Gigi, how you doing? Sarah, how you doing? Steve, Corbin, what's up, brother? Corbin Mason, senior. <laughs> Boss Rose, what's up, girl? Sora Karanda, what's going on? AJ, what's up, y'all? Glad y'all could join in. So, all right, let's see. What else do we want to get into? So, We've kind of gone through the rundown, all right? So, and we've talked about, uh, obviously, good friend and brother, Chef Gary Williams. Y'all make sure, man, that y'all go, um, 936 Florida Street, make sure that y'all go and check out um, Chef Gary Williams' spot, man, our brother, um, that is transitioned. Make sure that you go check him out. Um, And thank y'all for, some of y'all have been inboxing, uh, from the tribute from earlier here in the podcast. Thank y'all so much for those kind words, man. And 
Um, again, don't make it a popularity contest or any of that other foolishness that we like to do sometimes when, you know, when social media is involved in people's lives, man. You know, show love to the business and, and show love to people's businesses now while they're around. You know, you don't have to wait for people to transition to show love. Y'all hear that? Y'all like y'all don't like that. Though. Look at everybody jump off Facebook. <laughs> y'all jump off the Facebook live when I say that. Yeah, no, y'all don't have to. Uh, you don't have to wait for y'all. Y'all don't wait for you, like you don't have to wait for me to die to uh, listen to the Mind of Your Business podcast. Hell, listen to it right now, like y'all doing. I appreciate. It. Y'all don't have to wait till y'all see the, the people here on Facebook. Y'all on Spreaker. You know the people that y'all comment on every day and that y'all like, post, and share, and all that. Show them love today. Why you see them? Don't wait till somebody inbox you that somebody died and then now you got to jump up. Now, show love right now today. So thank y'all so much. Lawrence Thompson, the law. What's up, brother? And uh, Deborah Taylor, what's up? So last thing I want to get into on this special uh, tribute edition of the Minding Your Business podcast. And I'll be back tomorrow once I get back in town out of Pennsylvania. I get back to Memphis and I'm going to have Senator Katrina Robinson. Ooh, wee. <laughs> on the podcast, and we've got a good bit to talk about with uh, Senator Katrina Robinson, Tennessee Senator, uh, newly elected uh, White Haven veteran right there. So we're going to have her on tomorrow. But last thing I want to talk about, almost related to that, is um, so for those listening to the podcast, those in Memphis already know, but uh, if you're listening to the podcast, the Memphis City Council all right, so I'm not going to get into a long-winded rant type thing on the, the Memphis City Council, but um, they've had obviously some issues. And uh, so, just to give you a high level on the podcast, the Memphis City Council is the legislative body of the city of Memphis, and they've had issues ever since right before Thanksgiving. Uh, they had a meeting that lasted to damn near one o'clock in the morning. And you may ask, well, what the hell are they meeting about that long? Remember, the meeting starts about three thirty, four o'clock, something like that. And the council was to vote on, on a number of different, I think, 50 plus items, one of which included an appointment for District 1, which is here in Memphis, kind of the, the Raleigh uh, area for the most part. Um and there were several candidates who put their name in the hat. It came down to two candidates, uh, a Mr. Lonnie Treadway. I think it's Treadway, Treadway, one of those. And Miss Rhonda Logan. Uh, Lonnie Treadway had ran for office down in Mississippi, was unsuccessful, did not live in the district until just very recently, and put his name in the hat. And then Miss Rhonda Logan who has been in the community for a number of years over the CDC there and has, again, been entrenched in that particular community as well as in Memphis for a number of years. And uh, so that's what it came down to. And then there there was no consensus after over 100 votes on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And so they had to uh, adjourn without... Uh, making a decision, and uh, the chairman, uh, Berlin Boyd, has been quoted as to uh, there were folks trying to buy his vote and sway his vote and all this type of thing. And So they've met now on, I believe now it's maybe three, almost four different occasions. Um, now, now let me back up a little bit, because on this past Tuesday, um, four of the council members decided to walk out which was the right thing to do because there was a lot of gamesmanship and a lot of uh, just playing that was being done on the council. Because um, if you look at the resumes of the two candidates that were to be decided on one candidate, Miss Logan had a uh, resume and the support of the community. And the other one just did not, he did not have the resume of, of putting in work in that particular district and did not have the support of the citizens, which is what it's about. So uh, electing representation is about representing all people within a particular area or district. Um, it was clear who that was, but there was gamesmanship that went on. All right. 
So this was this past Tuesday that the four members uh, walked out. I believe it was Martavius Jones, uh, Jamita Swearingen, uh, Patrice Robinson, and Joe Brown. All councilmen, councilwomen. And so that happened on Tuesday. Wednesday, they did not show for the meeting, uh, which was Wednesday at 4 o'clock on yesterday. They didn't. Those four members that walked out the day before did not show up. And on today, I believe, I got the news that once again they did not show up. And um, in the midst of that on yesterday, Lonnie Treadaway decided to retract uh, his candidacy. Smart move. <laughs> and so um, that's what you had going on with the city council. So, um, you know, my message is, is this, that um, the day needs to come. And the day will come where councilmen and councilwomen won't have to walk out because injustice, either one of two things will happen to things that are injustice, particularly in Memphis. Either injustice will be brought to the table and it will be promptly voted down or injustice won't even make it to the to even, you know, into the room. That spirit won't make it into the room. And you ask, well, Champeron, why is that? Because you have righteous people in the room and you have enough of them. When you have enough righteous people in the room that look at not how they're going to control um, the council and how they're going to control votes, not on what they're going to do that's unscrupulous and shady, but what they're going to do that's part of the will of the people that's best for the city, that's not about their personal agenda or their personal feelings or what personal wins they're going to get. But that's about the will of the people. And that that day is going to come. It could come as early as 2019 from what I hear. And so um, that's where I'll leave that with the city council. They're going to meet again tomorrow on Friday. I believe at four o'clock and, you know, there were some council people that were wanting to use uh, the legal system to try to uh, quote unquote compel uh, the four members who walked out on Tuesday of this week, who walked out of the meeting so they could not have quorum and they haven't had quorum since they want to use legality or essentially arrest them and, and compel quote unquote to come to the the meeting, the city council meeting, and vote on that particular issue as well as other um, areas of city business that need to be um, discussed and need to be uh, voted on with majority vote on what direction uh, the city needs to go in that particular area. And so now that uh, Mr. Treadaway has dropped out, we will see how the city council reacts to that starting as early as tomorrow. And uh, at some point, um, those four members that walked out uh, will come back and then they'll go back to however they choose to do business. But we will get to the point. My point is, is we're going to get to the point in this city um, where those type of things won't happen because you're going to have enough righteous people in the room. That I didn't say great people. I didn't say unflawed people. I didn't say people that won't have or have dealt with issues and things like that or continue to deal with issues. But righteous people in terms of they're there to do nothing but serve the will of the people. The people that elect them, the people that support them. And when you get enough of those kind of people in the room, um, some great things can happen. And so that's what's going to happen. And, and that's where some of the changes next year. The reason I say 2019 is because, I mean, essentially every Memphis City Council seat is uh, going to be up for grabs in election. And there's some current uh, council members that are going to have to um, go back to their constituency and justify and state what they've been doing what they've been voting for, what they support, what they don't support. And there are going to be some fresh blood, new candidates that are going to come with new, fresh ideas and new perspective 
um, a new way of viewing the world and viewing government and viewing community. And they're not going to be playing. The, those people are not going to be playing next year. The constituency is not going to be playing with some of them that's on the council now. And some of the challengers, some of the challenging candidates are not going to be playing. Okay? They're not going to be playing in 2019. So just make sure uh, as you're listening to this podcast and those that are in Memphis, if you're on Spreaker, if you're on uh, Facebook Live, if you want to see something different, you have to do something different. If if you want it to stay the same, then you just do the same thing. It's just that simple. So we're going to see how courageous the city of Memphis is in 2019 um, in the mayoral race, as well as in the other races and, and with the uh, city council races. We're going to see how um, can people put their pace, Facebook fo- post. Yeah, I can't talk. People put their Facebook post where their mouth is. And can they put their comments and their shares where their voting fingers are when they get in that booth? That's what we're going to see next year. And we're going to see who's got the courage, who's got the gall, who's got the heart to help facilitate change. And then who's just talking, right? Who just like to get on live and just talk and who likes to comment and stuff and just do a lot of yapping. And but they're not really interested in any change in any status quo. So that's what we go look to see on next year. But so anyway, I'm going to close out this particular podcast, man. Thank you so much, everybody. Justin Spencer. What's up, brother? Uh, Rod Carter. What's up? Um, Everybody on Spreaker. Thank you so much. Listen, subscribe, listen and share uh, the podcast, the Minding Your Business podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Google Podcast, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, BoomTube, hell, everything that um, you can, every place you can get podcasts, you can find us. Just search the Minding Your Business podcast. And you can also go to www.mybpodcast.com. That's www.mybpodcast.com. You can learn more about me, more about the podcast, and you can listen to every single episode uh, that we've done. We've crossed over 27,000 downloads in about a year and a half with this podcast with no huge budget. Uh, I had some people laughing. I had no 50 cent marketing plan where I get shot nine times and then make a whole career out of it. Now, nah, we I have nothing like that. There was no uh, no rapping. I wasn't you know, I wasn't no rapper turned into no uh, podcaster. <laughs> I'm a I'm a business guy. That that happens to do a podcast. So that's what it's all about. And uh, I appreciate everybody's support. If you want to be a guest on the podcast, you don't have to be shy. You can reach out to me. I'm not going to bite you uh, unless you bite me first. <laughs> but if you want to be a guest on the podcast, talk about your event, um, talk about your business, just inbox me. Just reach out to me. I love to have you on. I'm mobile. I can come wherever you are. Uh, we can join over Facebook Live. So we can use the technology. We can get together however you want to do it. But uh, let's get the word out about what you're doing and share it with my particular audience. And so the audience is growing. Uh, Thank you all so much, man. Justin Spencer, thank you so much, bro, for those words. Um, But, yeah, let's communicate and let's do business. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. This is Champ Ron, the Minding Your Business podcast. Peace.